You know, you've heard it said that there are five fold ministries and five offices in the five fold ministry. And um, so I want you to do your hand like this. Look at your hand, do your hand like this. All right, the first one is the apostle, uh, meaning that if your hand does not work, if the thumb does not work, nothing is going to work in your hand. That's the truth. So have you cut off and you don't, need of, you don't have need of the other four hands? And then you see that second one? That's the prophet. That's the pointing finger. Announce the shiftings and the patterns of God in a generation. And you see that third one? That's uh, the hand that is the longest. That's the evangelist. Has the power to reach out uh, to the nations and to everywhere with the message of the gospel. The fourth one is that of the pastor. That's your love finger. That's why the pastor needs to be in love at all times. Uh, because that's the hand that binds all things together. Praise God. Amen. And then that final one is the office of what? The teacher. That's the only hand that can get into your finger. So you need to hear the truth. You need to hear the truth. Praise God. And so today I want to teach and I want to prophesy into your life. And I believe that God's grace and ability will be displayed even upon you and I in the name of Jesus. All right, very quickly, Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15. And the Bible says, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then verse 14 says, Then he appointed twelve. Listen to these, that they might be with him, and that he might send them how to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out demons. So, two things were essential. If I had time, I would have read John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. So, if you are taking notes, you can also write that down. John 15, verses 1 to 8. And tonight, I want to speak on how your work with God improves your work for God. I'm glad you are under an apostolic covering. So you are under a covering of our Father and Lord of the Church. And I want to thank the coordinator for this opportunity to bring God's word to you. How your work with God improves your work for God. Your work. That means W-L-K improves your work. W-R-K for God. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding to the simple. Father, you have sent your word, and your word does not return even void, but the purpose for which it is sent is always fulfilled. Even tonight, we gather to learn at your feet and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and tonight, I distill your word rightly even in the heart of your people in the name of Jesus. I declare, O God, that after now, we all shall be better people. We exalt and magnify you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All right, I'd like to start by saying that we live in a time and in a season that many people claim to work for God, but with their choices, their decisions, uh, and their attitude, and their acts, you can say that they do not know the God they say they serve. You only need to check on social media to see how far off course we are. I saw a viral video of people spraying money on the man of God. Man of God, they were throwing money on the pulpit of God. And I've had people also preach certain things and you begin to question whether they even know who it is that they preach. I've had many people say some things are heresy, heretical teachings, and they make a somersault of simple doctrines of the scriptures. And you begin to say, do these people know God? Do they have a walk with God? Let me start by saying that the first calling of God is that God calls us to himself. The first calling of God is that he calls us to himself. He called the disciples, the Bible says, so that they may be with him. So the first call of God is that you and I can be with him. And then the Bible says, and that he may send them out. But the first thing is that you and I should be with him. And the Bible says, so what does it mean to be with him? It means to know him, to serve him, and to love him. Three things, to know him, to serve him, and to love him. That's the first call of God. I like to say that from the scripture we read, Mark 3. 14 to 15, the Bible says, then he appointed 12 uh, that they might be with him. You see, Jesus called those 12 disciples uh, for the primary reason that they may be with him. Uh, the first call of God, like I said, is that you and I should be with him. Uh, should be with him. He appointed them that they might be with him. And they were with him on the earth for about three and a half years. Uh, during this time, they were barely in the ministry field. Uh, they really went out. Uh, on evangelism, on deliverance, they really went out. Scripture mentioned only about two to three times uh, that they were sent to the ministry field uh, even by God, uh, even by Jesus. Uh, 
the priority of the master was them sitting with him, was them being with him. And that has always been the priority. From this scripture, I want to say five things that are clear. Five things that are clear from this scripture. Number one, that the starting place for everyone called of God is being with Jesus. That's the starting place. You can call it the call to intimacy. The call to intimacy. That's the starting point. And that's number one. The first call of God is that you may be into him. Uh, that you may open up your heart to God and God may also open his heart even unto you. And then what's the second thing we can see? When he sent the disciples out, they always return to him. You see, he sent them out uh, and they always return to him. Uh, and that says that we should never neglect intimacy because of service. Don't say because you are serving God, you will neglect your work with God. Your work with God is essential. Anytime he sends the disciples out, you will discover they always come back to him. They always return to him. Therefore, your inner mind, your inner man, what people see behind the door, what they don't see behind the door, is more important than the outward appearance, than what you say in the open. And then number three, they spend more time with him than on the work of ministry. They spend more time, and that talks about priority. They spent more time with him, more than they spent even on the ministry field. At this time, many of us, we do many things. We spend many times in church. We spend many times, if much time, even doing the work of God. But we do not spend time staying with the God of the work. And that's important. You need to learn to stay even with the God of the work. Number four, that there is a link between service for God and intimacy with him. Jesus says, the Bible says in Mark chapter 3, that he called them unto himself, that, he, that they may be with him, and that he may send them out. So you can see that there is a chain. There is a link between the call to himself, which is intimacy, and then your service for God. If you miss that chain, you have missed it well. You have missed it well. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it well. All right, number five, that no one can be fruitful. No one can do a fruitful work for God who hasn't first been called to him. And that you will find in the book of John chapter 15. Scripture says in John chapter 15, he say, you will abide with me and then I will abide with you and then you will go forth and bear fruit. You see, you cannot bear fruit. Your fruit, you cannot be fruitful except you first learn to stay with God. Except you learn to stay with God. I know there are many distractions today. You want to be seen on social media. You want to be seen on the streets. You want to be known in the church. You want to work with God. You want to work for God and you want people to know you. But I've come to announce to someone today that it is more important that you have a working relationship even with God. It's important that we know our basics well. We know our basics well. Let me make the following statement right now. Let me make this following statement. You know, the Bible says in Luke chapter 10, Verses 1 to 12. Scripture says, He called the 70 unto himself, verse 1, and he sent them out that they may cast out devils. Listen to these. Uh, those who he called to himself were those who are with him. Those 70 were part of his disciples, that were part of the ministry team. They were not part of the close circles because there are circles of relationship when it comes to Christ. Uh, but there was this, so there was the three. There was a circle of one, John. There was a circle of three, uh, Peter, James, and John. And then there was the disciples, 12. Uh, and then there was the 70. So the Bible says he called the 70 to himself and then he sent them out. Before God will send you out, you must first have a working relationship with him. You must first be with him. And that's important. The Bible says in John chapter 15, Scripture says, Jesus says, I am, you are the branches, I am the vine. And God is the husband man. And whatever tree that does not bring forth fruit is going to prune. Is going to cut away. If you are fruitful, it will prune you so that you can bring forth more fruit. So that tells us that there is something about you abiding with God and about you having quality work even for God. And so I want to make the following statement before I go into what I want to say. Number one, that according to the new covenant, the main purpose of bringing the new covenant is that you and I may be closer to God. You see, that's the difference between the new covenant and the old covenant. The major difference is so that we can draw near to God. So that we can draw near to God. You are not a minister of the Old Testament. 
you are a minister of the New Testament. Uh, therefore, the way has been made to the Holy of Holies. Uh, make sure you are using that privilege. Uh, make sure that you are getting close to God. Uh, scripture says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19 uh, that a new covenant was brought uh, so that we can get near even to God. So it's important. Uh, the second statement I want to say is that the quality of our work for God we improve when our work with him improves. The quality of your work, O-R-K, is going to improve when your W-A-L-K, your work with God, improves. It will improve when the work improves. You can do better, you can become better, and you can have greater impact, but the secret is intimacy with God. The secret is intimacy with God. Number three, listen to this. I love this. When God said this to me yesterday, I wrote it down. A man cannot dance to the beat of heaven who hasn't had the rhythm of heaven. You cannot dance to the beat of heaven if you have not had the rhythm of heaven. It therefore tells you that you must have access to the secret place. You must know what God is saying per time. You must know what God is saying at this moment. Because if you do not know, you are not going to position yourself to be used of God for this time. Many people are still using methods of the 17th century at this time. Another reason, another thing, as ministers, we are supposed to move with the heartbeat of God. And listen, you cannot know the heartbeat of a person except you are close to the person. Uh, John, Peter, as loquacious as he was, as talkative as he is, he could not say anything. When he came to who was going to betray Jesus, the Bible says he looked at the disciple who rests on the bosom of Christ. His name is John, and said he should ask God. That tells you that uh, this was a man who was at the bosom and because of that he knows the heartbeat of heaven. It's important you know what God is saying at every time. You cannot know what God is saying except you are close to God. The more of God you know, the more of him you carry and the more light you shine in the world. And that's very important. Now I want to say to us very quickly here, how can I, steps to improving your work with God, steps to improving your work. When I say work, I'm talking about o I'm talking about A L K. Your work with God. Don't forget, I'm preaching on how your work with God improves your work for God. So, how can I improve my work with God? Number one, worship Him intensely and constantly. You need to worship Him. You are not going to enter into the depth of His grace and His anointing except you are someone who worship God. Worship is the access key to the throne room. Worship brings down the presence of God. Psalm 22 verse 3. Scripture says he inhabits the praise of his people. It means when you begin to worship God, God himself comes down. And he begins to live even amidst your worship, amidst your praise. God inhabits the praise of his people. 27 8 of Psalms. He said, my heart tells me seek the Lord. And I say, oh Lord, I seek you. You need to understand that there must be a pursue for God even in your heart. You must pursue him. Scripture says in 100 verse 4, Psalms, enter his gate with thanksgiving, his court, even with praise. You must learn to praise God. You must learn to worship God. Praise the Lord. The more we worship him, the more we access his grace. The more we worship him, the more of his presence we carry. It's important. Worship is the way by which we honor God. And God loves those who honor him. For Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. When you worship God, you lift him up. When you worship God, you honor him. When you worship God, you praise him. And as God's air begins to swear, he is going to also ensure that when men see you, their air also begins to soar. Praise God. Those who honor me, I will honor. It's not a prayer. Learn to honor God and God will honor you. It's a principle. Number two. Praying with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. We must learn to pray in the spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Bible says we should pray with all prayers and supplication even in the spirit. You must learn to pray in tongues, pray in understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. Paul says I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in understanding. I will sing in the spirit. I will sing in understanding. There are seasons of your life uh, that you will not know how to pray. But you must know to move in uh, even to the spirit. Let the spirit help you in your infirmities. Uh, begin to say. Lima honi no vine Go into God. Uh, because the deeper you go to him. Uh, the deeper of him. Uh, 
The Bible says deep calls to deep. There is a deepness in God. And as you access that deepness, your walk with God also improves. Praise God. Prayer is talking with God and receiving from him. Prayer therefore speaks of being with God and staying in his presence. Even when Jesus was always in the presence of God. Scripture says in Luke chapter 6 verse 12, Mark 1 35, he went all night to pray. He prayed all night. He prayed all night. The more time you spend with him, the more of his glow you carry. The more time you spend with him, the more of his glow you carry. And when you carry the glow of God, you are set a glow in the world. Men will see you that the quality of your work has improved. Why? Because you carry him who calls. You carry him who endures. You carry him who empowers. You have something that is different. You must learn to tarry and stay in the presence of God. Let me say this to you. A prayerless ministry is an unprofitable ministry. A prayerless ministry is a ministry without result. Stop wasting your time. Don't let anybody bamboozle you and tell you that you can confess instead of praying. Confession is not a way of communication. Confession is saying what God has said. In prayer, you tell God things and you receive from God. They are two different things. Homologio is different from praying and saying, Lord, I'm not going to let you go. I want to know what you think concerning this. Hallelujah. Amen. A prayerless man is an unfruitful man. Number three, honor is abiding presence. There is a presence that stays. There is a presence that stays. Jesus says, it is important that I go. If I do not go, I'm limited in time and in space. But when I go, I'm going to pray the Father that he may send you the comforter. The Holy Spirit, whom the world does not know, but you will know him because he will dwell in you. He will live in you. He will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance everything I have said unto you. There is a presence. It's called the indwelling presence of the Spirit. He's closer to you than a brother. He's the Holy Spirit. You must learn to communicate with him. You must learn every day you wake up say good morning Holy Spirit like Benny Hinn taught in his book. You must learn to keep the conversation going with the Holy Ghost. You need a car, you need to tell God I need a car. You need to transportation, you need to tell the Holy Spirit I need transportation right now. You need some money, you need to tell the Holy Spirit I need money right now. What do I do Spirit of a living God? Give me ideas, give me direction, talk to me and I'll know what to do. Why? Because you are working in tandem even with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, I love you. The disciples honored being in the presence of the Spirit of God. The disciples honored being in the presence of Christ. They just love it. They enjoyed it. And But he has gone right now. But there is the Spirit of Christ. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he is with you. If any man asks not the spirit of Christ, Paul says he is none of him. He is not of Christ. You have him on the inside. Every day somebody says you cannot do it. It is not possible. Just rejoice because you have the spirit of God. Just know it is going to work out for my good. Someone says I am not feeling fulfilled. I am not feeling happy. I am not feeling joyful. You have the Holy Spirit. You need to take some time out. I am beginning to pray even in the spirit. First John 2.20, scripture says, uh, you have an anointing from the Holy One, how you know all things. Uh, that Holy Spirit is in you. John wrote that and seven verses later, he was trying to teach what the principle was. Uh, he said, you have no need of teachers because that anointing, uh, First John 2.27, he said, he teaches you all things. Somebody said, I don't know that it's useful for chemistry. I said, it is useful. It is useful. He teaches you all things. Uh, it is useful for life. Uh, it's useful for marriage. It's useful for ministry. It teaches you all things. And before you need to learn to stay in the word. Praise God. Stay in the word. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and God himself was the word. Hallelujah. I know that the very expression of the word is the person of Jesus. The express image of his person. When I spend time in the world, reading the world, studying the world, I'm spending time in the presence of Christ. Because Christ is the embodiment of the word. Scripture says the word became flesh, dwelled amongst us. There is the word of God is a person. It's not just scriptures. It's not just paper or ink. There is spirit in God. You need to stay in the word. Paul writing to a young minister 
priest. He says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He says, study the word. Because if you do not study the word, the revelation of Christ will not come to you. If you do not stay in the word, you will not understand that it is profitable for reproof, for instruction, for doctrine, and for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. Stay in the word. Don't stay on Facebook. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Because the more you stay in the world, the quality of your work will improve. You will understand better. If you work for men and you work for men and you work because of men, they will put you down. But when you put your focus on God, Bible says, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1, if we'll be raised with Christ, let's set our eyes above and not under. Why? Because that is Jesus and he's the one we serve. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stay in the word. Look at your neighbor fiercely and say, stay in the word. Number five, you must live in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, scripture says, is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 110 verse 10, Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Oh, praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Psalms 112 verse 1. Oh, behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Because I fear him, I carry his presence. Why? Because his eyes is upon me. His eyes is upon me. You must learn to stay in God's word. And very quickly as I close tonight, I want to tell us the effect of an improved work with God on your work for him. What do I stand to gain when I improve my intimacy with God? What do I stand to gain when I become better even in my work with God? How does it affect my work for him? Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. Your cutting edge improves. <laughs> it sharpens your cutting edge. Nothing sharpens your edge like the presence of God. I love the way Lawrence sang it. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Listen, when you are in with God and you carry the presence of God, there will be an edge in your ministry. It was what it was a heart that set him apart. Oh, listen, when you get there, they know God has come. They know you have brought God. You do not just look for results. Result follows you. Why? Because whatever God follows, result follows. God is in a place and you know it not. It's not God. It's probably emotions. When God is in a place, you will know because his presence is always felt. You saw, you saw the book of Luke 24. The resurrected Jesus was with the disciples on the way to Hermias. And he was asking them, what's going on? Why are you guys sad? And they said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has gone out? And, and I love the way they said it in 24 and then verse 32. It says, how our hearts born in us as he shared the word with us. You see, it is not cramming scriptures. As you share the word, because you carry the God of the word, as you share the word, the heart begins to burn. There is a tangibility. There is a spirit that follows the word. It looks like what Jesus said in 63 of John. He said, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. What spirit does is that he quickens. Don't forget Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. What did he say? The Bible says he spoke to the wind and they came. They rose a mighty army. Something begins to quicken in you. Why? Because the wind of God's word has blown upon you <laughs> oh my god come breathe your name upon me breathe lord listen there is a life that comes upon your life 36 9 scripture says with him with who god is the fountain of life <laughs> and in his light do you in his life do you find light that tells you that wherever anyone stays with the God, who is the source, the fountain, the origin of life, he begins also to enjoy that life. Oh, you don't know the meaning of origin? <laughs> Praise God. Do you know the meaning of origin? Raise your hand. You don't know it? Raise your hand. Scripture says, let him that be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. Praise God. You don't need to know it. Hallelujah. Let's just continue. Amen. Number two, your knowledge of God improves. We are a people of the word. Hallelujah. Your knowledge of God improves. Your knowledge of God improves. Jesus said that the Samaritans serve who they do not know. <laughs> it's John 4, 22. He said you serve who you do not know. He said, but we serve who we know. 
There is a difference between a man serving a God he does not know and a man serving a God he knows. The more you get into God, the more your knowledge of him improves. Your service of God improves because you know the God who you are serving. Oh my God. God is the God of knowledge. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. For God is the God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. You must know that this God is a God of knowledge. If you do not know him, you don't know what is yours. Many people are suffering, but they do not know. Why are they suffering? They do not know that they do not know. My people have entered into captivity for lack of knowledge. 5.13 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6, my people also perish. For what? Lack of knowledge. Many people serve and minister to God without knowledge. Scripture says, then shall you know. How? Not by laying over answer. He said, then shall you know when you follow to know the Lord. When you follow to know him, you know him. The greater your revelation and knowledge, the better equipped you are to do the work of ministry. Oh, the more, the more your impact, the more the quality of your work. Why? Because your revelation and knowledge has increased. Ephesians chapter 1. And Paul began to speak, verse 16. He said, I pray for you. He said, that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. Oh, he said that the Lord of our Father, Jesus Christ, will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So, if all those prayers is that you may come into knowledge. Oh, that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened, that you may know. Now, what do you know? The hope of his calling. The glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints. The greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. Far above principalities and powers. You see, there are dimensions of God you do not access. Until you enter into epignosis. The full knowledge of God concerning a matter. But when you understand what he is saying, you begin to move in it. But revelation does not come because you slept. Revelation comes because you stay in the word. That word revelation means to reveal what has been hidden. Oh, what happened again? The fear of God replaces the fear of man. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. They looked at them. They looked at them and they knew they were ignorant and unlearned men. But they took notice of what being with Jesus had done for them. When you stay with God, when you stay with God, there is an audacity you have in the place of ministry. There's an audacity you have in intercession. There's audacity you have even in music. There's an audacity you have. Why? Because you know who you believe. When you listen to a man like Dusin speak, you know that that guy has audacity. Why? He has been with God. He has been with God. You don't have to say, I've been with God. People know it. People know it. People know it. You need to stay with God. Oh, you know, it was the professors of religion. It was those guys who should know that said it. He said they took notice of what being with Jesus had done to them. It wasn't just ignorant guys saying it. These were teachers of the law. They knew that something is with these guys. Something has changed about them. Being with God will change you. Being with God will transform you. Those who see God's face never bow to men. One of the things you lose as you constantly gaze on the face of God is that you lose the fear of men. Scripture says in Proverbs 28 and verse 1, the righteous is as bold even as a lion. There is something that happens to you. You may be a country demon, sir. You know they are going to bow. They are going to bow. Bible says in Acts 28, 31, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without ignorance. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, in whom we have access and boldness with confidence through our faith in him. Acts 4, 31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. With boldness. Boldness is a spiritual tool. Boldness is a spiritual ingredient. If you are going to fulfill your ministry, you need to learn boldness. God will give you a word of knowledge. Somebody here, you will not, if you are not bold, you will not say it. Boldness. Number four. You are empowered and anointed for the work. Empowered and anointed. Why? Because you stay with God. 
The anointing is short with God. You don't seek the anointing from men. I mean, you have heard Baba say it again and again. That the anointing, people come to him all over the world. He sleeps in a place. They want to sleep on that bed again so that they can get the anointing. Say, it's not like that. I, I know what I left. I, I didn't leave anything behind. So men will not give you the anointing. You need to go to God and get the anointing yourself. Are you listening to me? Oh, God. I love the way John Wesley was asked. He was asked, what is your secret? Why is it that many people come to hear you preach? He said, I get alone with God. He sets me on fire and people come to watch me burn. God set me on fire. He didn't say I set myself on fire because that's what some of you will say. No. He said God set me on fire. I got along with him. I set me on fire. And people come to watch me burn. See, there is something about burning men. It's attractive. There is something about flaming men. It is attractive. There is something about fire that calls for attention. Moses was walking and then he saw a burning bush. The Bible says he set aside to see what this means. People will begin to step aside from whatever it is they are doing to hear you sing. They'll begin to step aside from whatever they are doing to hear you preach. Why? Because you are burning for God. Tell your neighbor, get into God. Let him set you on fire. When Moses stayed in God's presence, <laughs> The scripture says they could not even look at his face. But that was a glory, according to Paul, a glory that was passing. And people could not see the face. I remember the first encounter I had with God sometimes in 2006. A lady who was my friend said to me, he said, wait, what is going on? I can't even look in the face. Have you not noticed I'm looking down? There are levels of encounters that will transform and change your life. There are God ordained the cantas. There are man invoked a cantas. You follow after God. You make the fire. Let God come down, born. You access revelation number five. Your access revelation and divine secrets will improve. Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. The secret things belong to God, but those two are that are the ones that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Do you think it will? God will blow a horn on the firmament of heaven and say, oh yeah, this is the secret. No. He only tells a few people. Amos, how do I know? Amos chapter 3 verse 7. The Bible says God will not do it in there without revealing it to his servant, the prophet. God revealed his secret to his beloved. Somebody said, but I'm not a prophet. How will God tell me? Have you not read the New Testament? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. Bible says uh, concerning the things uh, that, uh, that pertains even to us. Uh, Bible says that some things are hidden, some things are open. Uh, Bible says, but the Spirit searches all things. Uh, yeah, the deep things of God. That we may know the things which are freely given to us. You come to knowledge because you know. <laughs> Number six, you receive blueprint and instruction for all phase of your life. Someone says, let me say that again. You receive his blueprints and instruction for all phases of your life. For every time, men may be disturbed. You know what God is doing at, at the now. You are not perturbed. You are not disturbed. Why? Because you just know. You know what this moment is saying. You have understanding of time. The spirit of the Issachars have entered into you. You know because he had told you even before now. Someone says, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Or do I know him who owes tomorrow? That's, a, that's sweet nonsense. It's sweet crap. It sounds good, but it's religious. It's trash. We should know what tomorrow owes. We should know what God wants. We should know what the will of God is concerning our life. We should know what the plan of God is for concerning our life. The Bible says the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plan of his heart from generation to generation. For I know the thought I think towards you. They are thought of good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has a future, a plan for every life. It is time for us to access it and to know what God is saying in the now. Listen to this. Yesterday's instruction may not be enough for today's assignment. Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 2, Day unto day, utter speech. Day unto day. That means that daily you must hear from God. Daily as I live, often as I bring, let your heart be as Daily as I live, often as I bring, let my whole life be as 
actions of your grace. We call our Father, hallowed be. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed. Vina so mile kavino tu brahida vashe. If we will look into God, miti na fuli praki se furnushi hili adabarua. We will access divine secrets for our family, our life. Miti rakune shigia line frupi akiki sunta kiri diaba. Am I hiding things from you? Mitili arufa ekia sata. Is it not you that is not following after me and my ways? If you will follow after me, ki ahide holua pratas yete idaba. Everything will be open to you because I love you, I know you, and I have a plan for your life. Praise the Lord. Number seven. You speak with more power, authority, and grace. When a man has seen and been with the supernatural, everything about him changes. When you access God, you access faith. When you access God, you access knowledge. When you access God, you access wisdom. When you access God, you access strength. When you access God, you access possibilities. Scripture says in James 4, 8, come near to me. And I will draw near unto you. Your level of command changes. Your level of audacity changes. Why? Because you have been with God. You have been with God. Finally, brethren, fruitfulness is guaranteed with closeness. With closeness. With closeness. Fruitfulness is guaranteed when you are close with God. If you will stay with him, just lie down on your bed and just wash him. Just lie down on your bed and just focus on him. Be lost. Don't look for someone to preach. Don't look for someone to sing. Just sing to him. I love him because he does not mind how my voice sounds. He just enjoys my voice the way it is. Glory to God. And I just love singing to him. We'll sing in worship, we'll sing in praise, we'll sing in anything. I don't need equipment, I don't need drums to dance in his presence. Because when you cut the rhythm of heaven, you know how to flow with it. Stay in God. The more we abide, the more grace we carry. And the more the results we have in ministry. In conclusion, let's listen to what Jesus said himself in John chapter 15 and verse 5. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You know, I, I love to emphasize, I capitalize, you can do nothing. Jesus said, with him you can do, without him you can do nothing. It may not mean you will not be involved in ministry activities. It may not mean you will not seem to be doing something for God. But if God is not with you, if you do not have a walk with God, if you don't have a relationship with God, God calls it nothing. Because you are not abiding in the vine. He calls it nothing. We must learn to abide with him before we seek walking for him. I've had Kennedy again said this, uh, and if so, bless me. He was talking about it. I think I'll just end with this story. He was talking about a vision he had, how Jesus appeared to him. And then, and then Kennedy again said, uh, and Jesus was telling him uh, that, you know, right now you are going to enter into, your, into the first phase of your ministry. He said he wanted to say, ah, Jesus is lying or something. What, what's going on here? He's been in ministry for 15 years. And, and, and Jesus was saying that you are now about to enter into the first phase of your ministry. So what has he been doing? May you not run another man's race. May you not be in an office God did not call you for. Because men may say it is worthy. Men may say it is good. Can I again pastors, churches, and he was preaching the message of faith. But God still says you have not entered into the first phase of your ministry. I thank God he had a relationship with God. Some people are 40 years and they have not entered into the first phase of their ministry. Some people are 50 years in ministry. They have not entered into the first phase of their ministry. Some people are about to die, but they have not entered into the first phase of their ministry. I pray for you tonight. By the power and the ability and the grace upon this house, I declare that you will enter into the fullness of God's plan for your life, of God's plan for your ministry. You will fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. I declare that your heart from today will begin to pant after God. Like the psalmist says, it will become like a deer panting for the water brooks. I declare from today, may Jesus himself invade your heart. May the love of Christ invade your soul. May God himself quicken your spirit. May newness come to you. May you become a new creature indeed. May God's fire be enlightened even in you. May you be fired for God. In the name of Jesus. Worship God exalted. Give him praise. He is worthy. Praise God. I have a quick announcement.